This is a 0.75 kilowatt pump. The brand is called Quality. Where the motor meets the cavity, there seems to be a water leak. And there you might be able to see some of the water dripping out inside of the motor. All right, so this is the mechanical seal, which is on the inside, which I need to get to. There's also an O-ring, which goes over here. So I have a spare one. And then inside here, there's an impeller. So I have a spare impeller. And then there is an O-ring, which will need to be fitted. So I have all the spares in order to do this job. Make sure the power is off. All right, the first step is to unscrew all of these size 10 screws. I'm just using a battery operated wrench. And I'm removing these screws one by one. Right, so I can move the motor there, it will drain a little bit. Right, on this unit there are three screws here I need to remove. Right, there are the three screws. Now this can come off. Just note that this needs to be put back on in the exact same orientation. So there I can see where the line was. Now here's the impeller and I am seeing quite a bit of wear on this impeller. Right, in order to get the impeller out, I need to wedge something in order to stop the motor from turning. Now on this unit, there's actually a hole here and then there's a space for a flat screwdriver. So I'm putting a flat screwdriver there and that is gonna stop the unit from turning. See, as I turn it, you might notice the screwdriver is also turning. So if I hold the screwdriver still, I'll be able to release the impeller. Right, there is the screwdriver in the back and I'm holding that firm, but I'm still unable to get this impeller off. So another way is to just remove this cover to get a better grip. So just using a star screwdriver, I'm just removing these four screws here. And then this can come off. And this is where I was wedging my screwdriver to stop this from turning. But since this is open, I can just take my hand here and then on the impeller side, I can just turn it there. It's actually coming loose. Wasn't that tight. Now, in your case, if it's still not coming loose, you can use a screwdriver and you can turn it with a screwdriver or at least wedge it. Now, notice that this thing is unscrewing anti-clockwise. And there, looking inside, I can see that these blades are quite worn. And even here on the sides, it's actually open all the way. I can actually get my nail all the way in there and there. So I will need a new impeller, but I also need a new seal. So I'm going to change the seal so long. Just unscrewing it. All right, so inside there is the old ceramic ring with the seal. Now, if you wanted to, you could open these four screws and remove this. But in my case, it's not necessary. I'm just going to peel this old seal out. And there it comes. And there I can just remove the old seal plus the rubber. Now the old seal is in very bad condition and I can see that it needs to be replaced. I can see that the rubber is fatigued, almost looks like it's leaking. Looks like it has discolored here from corrosion, which means water was getting through there and that is why it was leaking. Before putting in the new seal, I'm just going to use some rubbing alcohol. Uh, there's no glycol in here. This is just 90% pure rubbing alcohol and I'm just cleaning around here and cleaning inside there. And then I'm just taking a blower and just blowing out any sediment. Now over here I have my new seal and I need to seat it. It might get stuck. So what you can do is just wet around here. So I'm just going to wet this a little bit. I just put a, a, just a drop of water around the side so that it seats nicely. There we go, all the way in. All right, I've just given this a wipe. There's a bit of deposits on the surface here, which could be calcium. This could be because of hard water, but also because of a leaking seal. Right, now the old seal looks like this, so I've removed this part and I can see that there is a shaft there, a threaded shaft. Right, so I need to get this shaft out, so uh, it's quite stiff. You can tap it, you can just tap it out if you want. You need this threaded pipe. Right, this shaft is very rough and it's supposed to slide in there, but it is very rough. So I'm just going to clean it up and I'm using a 220 grit sandpaper and I'm just cleaning the sides, making it smooth. Okay, it's in much better condition now. Now I just take an 800 just to polish it and make it completely smooth. Right, now that this is smooth, I can seat it in here. Now, if it's a bit stiff, what I advise is to wet this. So I'm just going to wet this and then I'm going to slide it inside here. Okay, so it's just a little bit wet and now I can slide it inside here. If your threads are rusted at all, or you're finding it difficult to screw this in, then put some grease on, make sure your threads have been cleaned up. My threads are in good condition and I can just screw this right in. Make sure that the Teflon side mates with the ceramic ring. Make sure to turn this as far as it can go. Right, now rotate the impeller in a clockwise rotation. 
and there's a definite end spot right, holding on to the back I just make sure that the impeller is nicely placed I spin it to make sure there's nothing scratching impeller is perfect all right, it's easier to put the cover on now while the motor is still in hand right so now it's time to put the diffuser on it can only go in one place so notice that it seats like this and all the three screw holes align. If you had to look at it like a clock, there's the brand label and there it's aligning to 10 o'clock. Screw in the three screws. There's a seal going around here. I'm just removing the old seal and I'm going to replace it with a new seal. Right, the O-ring here seats over here and I'm just wiping it out, just making sure that it is completely free of any dirt. I seat the new O-ring. Now be careful because this o-ring might pop out so you've got to keep making sure that it's seated properly especially when you reattach the motor to the housing. Right on the inside here just clean it up make sure it's clean because there's going to be an o-ring that seats here. Seat the replacement o-ring. Making sure that the o-ring does not move line up the holes and hold it in place. Right so I've screwed in one at the bottom and one at the top they are not tight they're just like finger tight. Now I'll go opposite side and then opposite side. Right, so I've put one on the opposite side, it is not tight, and I'll come to this side again. Right, as it starts getting tight, I stop. Right, I just go with opposite, 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 and I slowly tighten them one by one until they are quite tight. Right, now they're all tight. Now, because we had opened this, all the water had leaked out. So what I'm going to do is, before I turn the pump on, I'm going to fill this up with some water because it is completely dry. So I don't want the pump to run without water in the system. So I'm just opening up that lid and I can see there is no water in here. Right, so as long as there's some water inside there where the pump is, then it's fine. You won't be able to fill it up all the way because remember that then you'll be filling up the pool. Let it run for a few hours and there are no more leaks. Thanks for watching and cheers.